fascinating testing with Spock. This is a quick introduction on some tips testing with Spock. And I'm going to tell you a little why do we love it so much in our company. But first, let me uh, speak a little introduction about the company. The company is called Shipstead, which is ship what? Shipstead. It's a company that's more than 100, 150 years old, started with traditional media, it's from Norway. And then, like 10 years ago, transitioned to uh, classified media and digital media. Uh, sorry, classified ads. And uh, we have more than 130 million users uh, worldwide. Some people say from marketing is 200 million, but it's marketing people, so you know. It's, so uh, yeah, one of, uh, we have many brands around the world. Some of them, maybe you will recognize them. Uh, if you're from France, probably you know uh, Le Bon Coin, Vivo here. We used to have some guys from Vivo here there, but they left. Uh, yeah, from Bladet, Blocket in Sweden, Sundano, Mexico. We are around the world. We have also sites in uh, Asia and stuff. So a couple of years ago, the company decided to make a drastic change on everything. Uh, and they said, okay, let's transform ourselves as a tech company. So what we're doing is tech and our customers are our sites, all the sites we have here. And we're developing components for all these sites. So we have these customers. And the good thing is we are greenfielding everything. We are creating projects for, uh, from scratch. So you could think that we are a startup, but with the difference that we are already being funded. We are self-funded. So it's pretty great. We can do a lot of stuff. and We can do a lot of mistakes without not too much consequences. So first, a quick survey. Uh, how many people do here does tests? That's good. The, guy, uh, the people who didn't raise the hand, you should be ashamed. And so, uh, how many of you are using JUnit currently? It's great. Yeah, me too. Mokido? It's good. JBehave? Does anyone use? Uh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be more popular. Okay. And um, Spock? Nice. How many people? Yeah, of course you use it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you too. Uh, so, how many of you already know what is a Spock? Okay, you can leave because it's no, just kidding. Uh, so, what is a Spock? First, before entering on the introduction of what is a Spock, I'm going to explain you what is the non goal of this presentation. I don't want to claim that Spock is better than anything. I think it's up to anyone, and I think JUnit is awesome. I went to a presentation about JUnit 5, which is uh, on release on October, I think. Uh, and I think Spock is a great alternative, and I'm going to show you why. The goals on this presentation is, first, I want you to make love Spock. Not make love to Spock. <laughs> yeah, or at least get interested to consider it using in your code. Uh, also, I'm going to give you some tips uh, on testing on Spock. But the most important goal here is I want to end this presentation without making any references or puns about Star Trek. <laughs> So the only one we are having is the title, which is fascinating. And that's all, no Star Trek here. So I prepare a quick introduction, Star Trek less on um, spot. Here we go. <laughs> so. started the development like in 2008, has been in development for eight years and released the milestone 1.0 in 2015, last year. They've been on 1.0 since then, uh, they haven't released any major branches, I, I mean any major releases so far, but if you check on GitHub, it's pretty active. The development has been developed in Gradleware by a couple of engineers and the thing that I love the most on Spock is how expressive it is. It has all the good things about Groovy, and it's really easy to read, really, really easy to follow, and it provides you uh, mocking, spying, stubbing out of the box, so you don't need external tools on that. So I think for me it's not only great working with Spock, but also it's more productive and it's more fun. And I'm going to show you why. As soon as the rail finishes, of course. I can stop the song. Yeah, 
anyway, there is a star. Uh, that star after that. And um, okay. So, <laughs> so why Spock? We have very readable little test code. I'm going to show you later on. We have all the groovy uh, features and magic which are available, but of course you're Java developers and maybe you want to use your Java. Don't worry, Groovy is basically Java without semicolons and more. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but you can use it as it was Java and you are not going to notice any difference on that. You have an embedded mocking framework and it's very extensible. There is a lot of uh, models available around and it's completely compatible with JUnit. So if you want to use rules, for example, no problem, you can use it. Uh, code coverage, if you use Jacoco or whatever the tool you're using on code coverage, is going to uh, be reflected even if you're using Spot. So don't worry. Uh, it's good. The only thing you have to do is programming Ruby. But as I said before, if you don't know Ruby, no problem. So <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to explain a little the usual thing how we people put the test so it's the typical given when then so in the given we express or we declare the state of the world we declare a class or we put everything set up for the test on the when we describe we describe the behavior we want to check and then we validate the the well the behavior what we expect so, uh, for example, in JUnit, which is, as we saw before, is the most popular framework for testing. Um, I'm going to use JUnit then for, as an example. Uh, JUnit, if, for example, we want to test a class that converts uh, integer numbers to Roman numerals, we have then, we could have like a test like that. We want to return an i when we put a 1. So we have the given in the first line, some people separate it with spaces. We declare the class, I mean we instantiate the object. We set the behavior, I want a result, converting the number one, and we assert the result. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. So <clears throat> let's see how it looks in Spock, but first I'm going to quote I'm going to take a quote from a guy, uh, well, a quote very used on the clean coders, from a guy who's called Grady Book. And this guy, which is this awesome hair and beard guy, who is the author of object oriented analysis and design with applications, has a, a sentence about clean code that says, clean code reads like well written prose. So, Let's go back to the JUnit example. If we run this test, what we are going to have as a result is the okay when converting a number one should return an i. I usually put the numbers on the test, I mean, I usually put the names on the test to try to express a little what we are trying to test. And I think everybody should do the same. It's up to you. Uh, so how does this look in Spock? So first, on the name of the method, you can write it like well written prose. When converting a number, one should return an I. That's all. Spock forces you at compile time to have blocks the given when then. And in the given, we can set up the environment, the world. In the when, we check. And in the then, we just see the, well, we, we assert the result. Um, things that you can see here. Since we are using Groovy, you, can, you don't have to put the, um, uh, the object, <laughs> uh, the, the class, sorry, on declaration. But if you want to, you can use it, as, well, uh, as I said before. If this is not clear enough in the given when then, well, you can put text on each, on each uh, one of the blocks. Given a Roman number converter, when we convert the integer to one, uh, we convert the integer one, we should get an I. So this is very, very easy to read. And the greatest proof on that is that I showed this presentation to a product manager and the product manager told me, this is code that I actually can read. A product manager. So <clears throat> when you get the result, also you get the result with the same name of the method, which is basically a sentence, not camel case, uh, Mm, stuff. <laughs> but one thing, one moment. Yeah, 
JUnit has display name, so you can put a uh, display name and you will get also the result like in Spark. Yes, that's right. It's on JUnit 5, by the way, so wait for October. This Spock has been having it for one year or more. But again, I'm not claiming that Spock is better than anything. It's just because I love it and I want to show it to you guys. I want to share it because share is scary. I don't know, it's scary. So failure feedback. When you run a test and you fail a test, hey Dimitris. Uh, when you run a test and, you, and it fails, usually you have an, an exception or an assertion exception on JUnit. On Spock, what you're getting back is the condition not satisfied and it's going to tell you where it fails and the results and the numbers. So for example, if I did a really crappy custom stack that doesn't increase the size when I push something inside and then the assertion fails, and it's going to tell me that the size is zero. And it's very easy to read and it's very easy to understand. And I think it's very easy to follow. <clears throat> so, uh, comparing to JUnit again, we have in Spock fixture methods, which is the setup and the cleanup, which is the equivalent ending in JUnit with the before and after annotations. Sorry, <laughs> I'm thirsty. We have the setup spec and cleanup spec for running before all the tests inside the specification, uh, which is before class and after class. Tests on Spock are called specifications, by the way. And what about the blocks? Remember we said the, that we are forced to have at least one block in each test on Spock? So we have six types of blocks. The setup or given, it's an alias. The when and then, which is how we set and check the behavior. And the expect, which is a shortcut for when and then, when you want to basically do an assertion in a single line with declaration and everything. We have the cleanup if you want to declare, and the where. I'm going to get into the where later on because it's really cool and it's uh, focused on uh, data driven testing. <clears throat> so, one thing blocks must come in a logical order. So, you have to start with a given, you have to continue with the when and you have to finish with the then. This is good. If you do this, then when given, this is not good. We cannot talk backwards. Bad. Oh, where's the bad? Here. Yeah. <clears throat> so, going to data-driven uh, testing, JUnit has a really neat feature called parameters when you can set up them for tests. So, let's say, for example, if we want to check the Fibonacci sequence. Um, in uh, JUnit, for doing a test with the assert equals the expected and the computation of the Fibonacci, I can set up an input, uh, the expected, and the, uh, both of them, I took them as a parameter. For that, I have to declare the parameters as a collection and inside the collection an array of objects inside. So then with the annotation, I assign each value of the array and the collection on each one of the um, of the, sorry, variables. And then I can run this test, and this test is going to run one, two, three, four, six times. Seven, sorry, for each one of the values. This is on JUnit. How this test looks with Spock? The same exact test, and I'm not changing the font size for not tricking anyone. It's like this. <clears throat> so, test the Fibonacci sequence, I expect I put expected Fibonacci compute input. What is expected and what is input? This is the where block enters. The where is where we assign the values for each one of the variables. So the expected is going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, the Fibonacci sequence, the seven first ones, and then the input, the order or the numbers we're checking. Very easy to read. But wait, there is more. It could be easier to read, even, uh, it could be even easier to read. You can use pipes. So you have the expected and the input, and then you put it in columns, and you can read it very easily. The secret here is that you have the on-roll annotation on top of it, and this means <coughs> that once the test is run, it explodes in, in this case, seven different tests, and you're going to see it on IIDE if you run it, and you will see one test for each one of them with an MI put on the top, test Fibonacci sequence. Uh, all these tests uh, are run uh, independently, like you were declaring the method separately. 
This means that you can put here variables to check it. So I could put the input variable A, B, C, D, whatever I want, but they must be static or using a notation called share. Why? Because as I said before, each one of the rows is uh, executed as an independent test, so you have to keep the variables across all, this, uh, across all the iterations. <clears throat> so when I run the test uh, with the unroll method, I'm going to have seven rows with the same name, which is not very clear for, for us. And if, if one fails, I don't know which one was it. The first one, the second one, the third one. So I can do something on the name. I just put test the Fibonacci sequence when the input is hashtag. No, I don't know. I, how, how do you say it's not hashtag? Well, that thing, input. And it's going to take the variable on the naming. And in the results, you are going to get test the Fibonacci sequence when the input is 0, 1, 2, 3. And you could do it also with the expected, and you have. I expect the Fibonacci sequence returns, I don't know, 3 when input is uh, 3, uh, etc. So it's very clear, it's very easy to read. Again, let me, uh, I really want to stress that this is really, really great for reviewing, reading the code, and reading the test, and understand what are you doing. Um, so interaction based testing. Can anyone raise their hand if they don't know what it is? Okay, good. And? Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, MOX. MOX is basically a dummy class, a dummy instantiation on a class. It's just that it. So if I want to pass a parameter and I want to pass the, uh, an instantiation on an object, but I don't want to put a specific instantiation or I can put like an interface or anything, I can use a mock. A stop, you could say it's like a mock, but you define the behavior. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on the stop, you define the behavior of the mocks. Well, it's a stop, it's not a mock anymore. So you say, okay, when I receive this uh, variable on the, I don't know, if I execute this method on this uh, object with this parameter, I return this or I execute that. So you define it as uh, the stop. And the spy is <coughs> you get a real instantiation of the class, but when you put a spy or you assign a spy to it, you can then actually check which methods have been called, which, uh, which functions have been executed, and so on. We're going to check it out uh, now. So first, let's start with mocking. Not that kind of mocking, of course. So how do we instantiate a mocking? Thanks to the magic of Groovy, it just put def my mock, and I put my custom class, and then I have the instantiation of a mock. And I can work with that. Also, if you want to have be more type safe, you can put it there, or you can put it in both pl places, the, uh, the class. <clears throat> so once I mock a class, I can do some tests on it. So for example, let's, do, let's pretend that we have a publisher class. The, the publisher class, you can put subscribers inside of it. And when you publish something, the subscribers have called a method called on event. So we, we mock two subscribers, we create a new instance of the subscriber, and we, we just add the subscriber inside the publisher. I don't care the result. I don't care about what it's going to do. The only thing that cares for me is that the, on the subscribers, the method on event has been called. So I go to my when, I call the publish, um, the publish method on the publisher, and then I check if the, call, if the method on event has been called on both subscribers. How do I do that? I just put that one asterisk, subscriber on event, hello. And then uh, Spock is going to test and it's going to check if this method has been called once. And that's all. <clears throat> but we can do more. You can check if uh, a method has been, uh, hasn't been called at all, for example, using the zero. Or if you can, for example, you can check a range of calls on the method. So maybe I want to check if the on event has been called between one and five times. But there is more. You can use wildcards. So for example, if I put uh, underscore, 
this means that is the uh, uneven must be called zero or many times uh, uh, one to underscore means that at least one time underscore to three up to three times and so on but there is more I can check if the method uneven has been called in any uh, object any instance I don't care if it's a subscriber if it's anything else I just want to check if the uneven has been called or if the uneven has been called with whatever it has inside or if uneven, uneven has been called with a string I don't care the value of the string and it's going to check it or any method with any variable in the subscriber I don't care the method I don't care the content I just want to check if the subscriber has been called something but there is more you can check with regular expressions so I can check for example the subscriber has been called a method that starts with a no has a lot of characters and finishes with a t which is uneven in this case but this is super useful if you want to check for example getters so I can check if the subscriber has called any getter with any parameters inside I have my mind blown so stopping <clears throat> yeah uh, how do we stop you can stop mocks or you can just declare directly the stop in uh, Spock so what I'm doing here I'm stopping the subscriber and I'm telling okay when I receive the uneven with the hello value return a true if I receive the uneven with the by value as a string return a false and that's all so next time I run this test if I'm using the subscriber it's going to return a true or a false depending on the variable I'm uh, passing I also can put conditional values on return so for example if the subscriber call, uh, calls the uneven with any value remember the white cards we mentioned it before um, well I want to send the con uh, I want to check the content that I receive and if it's hello return true if not it's false and then I'm going to have uh, a conditional behavior in just one single line so there is more of course you can stop and verify remember we were verifying before the methods on the mock okay so I'm doing the same thing now but the thing is like now the subscriber is uh, describing the behavior while I'm checking it so bear with me it's the same test that we had before but the only thing I'm doing is here return true here return true so what Spock is going to do here is test the method publisher publish hello and once the subscriber one the first subscriber calls the uneven return a true so I'm checking that this method has been uh, has to be called once and also at the same time I'm telling it to return true and in the next one I'm doing the same thing <coughs> this could be a little confusing if you're not, uh, not aware of that because when you describe the behavior with the asterisk outside the then means that you're verifying as well so it's like you have been calling it and then you have the verification then and it's not going to be called again because you already call it did it make sense yeah okay <laughs> you can ask questions later <laughs> so uh stopping and verifying so uh yeah basically what i said before we verify and stop okay and the last one spying um, so spying is as instantiated in a spy is and is, is as easy as the other ones uh, yeah so uh, what is this doing death subscriber spy subscriber basically I'm doing new subscriber I'm calling the, the create method on the um, on the object and then I'm spying on it oh wait 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 but what happens if they has arguments yeah if I want to associate it one with arguments I do the spy and I can pass the constructor arguments in the same uh, in the same block and this means that I'm going to call 
new message with hello as a parameter in the constructor. <clears throat> On spice, I also can modify the behavior, so I can stop it. So I have a spy, I already have uh, my methods inside, they already have uh, their standard uh, behavior, but I can override some of the behavior. For example, yeah, okay, work like the usual implementation of the class, but when you call the uneven, return true always. And I'm overriding it. But maybe I want to go back and call the original implementation. No problem, just put. Subscriber on event, and if you receive a message inside the, um, in, the, um, in the argument, call the real method. Call real method is a, it's an option, well, it's a, it's a method in, in Spock for calling the original method and the implementation of the class. So it's not going to work if you're using an interface, of course. Or you can call the real method with arguments. So if I receive a message, okay, call the real uneven by passing hello as an argument. Yeah? Quick warning, if you're using Spock, which I hope you will, uh, Java Spy objects can be static or shared. This is a restriction, this is a limitation on Groovy, they have to be Groovy classes. I figured out that with the, um, the worst possible way. <laughs> Failing a lot. So this is the basics on Spock, but wait, there is more, be with me. So <clears throat> we have conditional testing, we have an annotation called uh, requires or ignore if. What, does, uh, what ignore if does is the opposite of requires. I put the annotation and I say okay, for example I want to test a uh, uh, service that connects to Amazon, but I want to run this test only I have, if I have the credentials with Amazon. So I put requires and check the environments if it contains a key of uh, AWS access key. And if we don't have that on the environment, the test is not going to be run. Ignore if is exactly the same, but the other way around. Or just uh, not that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So for example, I want to check a service. Um, so, but I need, I mean, I want to check a connection to a service and the result. But first I have to check if the service is available. So I can create a static method, which returns a boolean. I can pass it in the requires and it's going to set it up and return a boolean. And then we know if, we can, if the test is going to be run or not. So if we don't have internet and we try to connect, or well, in this case we don't have connection to, if our service is not running in localhost, this test is not going to be run. And thanks to the magic of Groovy, you can use a uh, memoizer, which is a notation which caches the result of a method. So it's going to be run once and then the boolean is going to stay there for the rest of the test. So you don't have to call this method uh, anymore. System properties. So let's pretend we have a super dangerous uh, method that is going to check something very dangerous that could destroy everything. So for being on the safe side, I'm going to set the uh, property environment on the profile, which is uh, yeah, the profile we're using on uh, Spring Cloud, for example, it's Spring Boot, sorry. Uh, I'm going to set the environment on dev. So then I can safely call this uh, call apocalypse method and I can check that the exception has been thrown. Okay, this is great. I've tested something, uh, I didn't break anything, and I set the environment on dev. What's going to happen when I run this other test? Well, the problem is the environment is still test. And maybe this other test, I don't want it to be on the dev uh, environment. Okay, no problem. Spock has you covered. So we have this annotation which is called restore system properties, and what it's going to do is restore the properties the same way it was before running the test. So you encapsulate all the, system, uh, all the properties uh, sets are inside this uh, specification. Auto cleanup. So uh, I'm checking a closable resource. <clears throat> if I run my closable resource and execute function, okay, I could check, for example, I didn't throw an exception, but I have to close it. 
because if not, we are going to have uh, resources running around and doing stuff over there. So, I have one option. Uh, I can use the block called cleanup, and then I can call my closable resource close. This, this is one. Or instead, I can use the cleanup spec. Every, I mentioned it before. So every time I I run the or the whole spec, then I can close my my closable resource. Or, and this is the cooler one, the coolest one, sorry, using the auto cleanup annotation. Auto cleanup, close. And then I define the resource, and what it's going to do is, every time it's going to close it, clo calling the close method, uh, method of closable resource. And then you don't have to worry about closing the resources there. <coughs> also, there are some times that you want to specify the order of the specification, execution. So you want to run one first, the second one, and the third one. You don't, you don't have any warranty that's, that's going to happen unless you put the stepwise annotation. And then you know that the first test is going to be, oh, fist test, sorry, typo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, at the second test. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the tests are going to be run in the same exa in the exact order they, uh, they have been uh, called. Also, we have timeouts. <clears throat> if I want to check uh, how long a test is going to be run, or maybe I want to check if they are fast enough, I can use the timeout annotation. So, for example, in this case, I just do the expect. Remember, I told you expect is the shortcut for the when and then. So, I expect new quick process execute. And I put a timeout. This means that if this doesn't happen after one second, the test is going to fail. 100 milliseconds, I can specify the time unit as well. And the same thing, 100 milliseconds, if the test didn't finish in that time, it's going to fail. And finally, we have models. Out of the box, we have Spring, a Spring model, which is, integrates really um, nicely with the text context framework. And GUIs, I don't use GUIs, but I know it's very popular. And they have more models uh, working. And also there are some contributions like on Wiremark, which is my favorite. We use a lot of Wiremark, uh, at least on my team, for, uh, for doing some testing. Uh, for the ones who don't, don't know it, basically Wiremark is uh, starting a, web a, market, a market web service locally. So you can check your REST calls and see if you receive all the parameters or the body you expected or whatever you want. It's pretty cool. Wireworks uh, works great and already has rules for JUnit. The good thing is there, is, there are libraries that integrate Wiremock really, really, really nicely with Spock. You can use Wiremock out of the box with Spock, but if you want to have the fancy stuff, you can use that library. Just Google Wiremock Spock and you will have it. It's called Wiremock, Wiremock Spock, in fact. And as I said before, you have the rule, you can use it uh, right away. And then you can stop the wire mock, like, okay, uh, I want, uh, when I get a request to the sum path response, I must be at 200 with a body, and with that header. It's very readable, it's very easy to, it's very expressive, and you can check, and it's very understandable what are you doing and what you're mocking. So, <clears throat> Being really fast. I was expecting it to be slower. Last words. So, it's very easy to read, it has a lot of syntactic sugar. So, if people say, oh, no, I don't want extra uh, useless text, probably you are not going to like Spock. Uh, it's very easy to learn, honestly. I mean, on my team, we were using the unit for like forever. Uh, we started using Spock thanks to that guy. Yeah. And, well, after, I don't know. Two weeks, we were completely. We migrated all our tests to Spock, and developers were happier. Really, they were smiling in the morning. They were drinking less coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bashing less on the product managers. Groovy provides really neat language features. Don't let Groovy die, please. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's great. And the most important one, it is fun. I mean, people are having. I mean, I, I know it sounds crazy, and maybe it's like an hyperbole. What I'm saying, but really, people are enjoying doing tests. 
people are having fun doing the test and people are having fun doing like tricky stuff uh, checking the different how to compose these sentences this prose on code with a uh, with spock so it's great and it's really really easy to read even a product manager can read the code written on spock so yeah thanks yeah and yeah one last word yeah i have to say it remember what i told you that our company is awesome okay we're hiring so i'm going to, while we're doing the questions i'm going to give you the information if you want to check it out uh, my mail is there if you want to write me there is an easier version of my mail because yeah it's not easy to to write uh, my reader account i don't write too much interesting stuff but you can contact me over there as well so thank you very much and yep Questions? If any. Uh, did you have the chance to try uh, Spock with other JDM languages, like for example Scala? No, no, right now, no, we haven't had the chance. We could check it out. I, I know that Kotlin, for example, integrates really easy with Java, and I don't think why it shouldn't work with Groovy, but I haven't tested it out, so I will lie <laughs> if it's going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in one of the examples you showed, um, a then statement saying a certain exception is not thrown. Yeah. But if it would have been thrown, I would expect the specification to fail. So why check that it's not thrown? Because sometimes, you yeah. <laughs> you mean, uh, let's go to, uh, back to that one, and uh, I'm going to explain. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. This one. Yeah. yeah, you can just put expect Microsoft Resource Execute function and it's going to work. The reason you have not, not thrown here is because it's readable. Then you understand what you're doing. But yeah, uh, an easy one, uh, way to do it is expect Microsoft Resource Execute function and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Sorry? What about you can use it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, you want, you want to use PowerMock, you want to use Mokido, don't worry, you can use it right away. You can just put a spark and it's going to work. You can, you can even more, uh, mix and match uh, yeah, uh, spark mocks with other ones. I mean, not, not mix, sorry. You can use them on, on, on the same test if you want to. Yeah, good. Thank you very much.